Duralar. So here's Duralar, all right? So it's C3, you can see my hand through it. Um, when you're doing Duralar, the, the, all those same techniques can still work. You just have to realize what you're gonna see in the end for your portrait is on the back. So, all right, if my portrait is here, I'm gonna lay down uh, the colors in the center here. I'll take a couple different colors on the palette knife and I'm gonna smear it. And I'm, I'm just paying attention to where the outside of the shape of my face of the portrait is. I'm gonna grab a different color and smear. All right, take some of that dark green and smear. Right. I'm going to take a little bit lighter color because I want to kind of get a look of the top of the hat maybe being a little bit more light. All right. The cool thing about Duralar is you can scrape. It's really good at scraping. So you can scrape a lot to get that kind of texture um, because it's kind of that plasticky film you can really scrape really in, in really cool ways, all right? Now, as I do this, I'm very aware that the first thing that I lay down is what I'm gonna see on the back. So if I go like this and have a whole bunch of cool textures on the top, if I flip it over, I don't really see it, right? It's just dark. But what I do see is all the smears and the texture on, on the back side. So uh, that's why the scraping technique works really good for, uh, really well for Duralar. And uh, the colors, as I said, that lay in first are the ones that um, you're gonna see the most on that texture. So um, here I'm gonna grab some dark. I noticed in, in the photograph that there's kind of like more of a shadow on this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna still stick with my bright, bright colors and gonna not touch it very much. Wow, look at those cool colors. Look at that. Look at that marbling effect and I'm gonna check and that still looks really cool on the back side. That's awesome. Lay in some of those darks on the other side. You can do that, you don't have to do that if you want. don't want to. Um, but that's just something I noticed in this particular portrait of Jackie Robinson here. And there's a little bit of texture and done. Okay, I'm not gonna overwork it because as we said before, too much mixing is muddiness. Okay, so now I've got that texture here, nice and light. I can notice what's happening on the outside and it's not overly mixed. The first stuff I put down, I'm not gonna bother putting a whole bunch more paint down because, well, you're not gonna see it, right? The paint is coming on top. We're gonna to see the back and that looks sweet already, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is just let that dry and then I'm gonna lay in the background color next so on top. What I've done is let the paint of the, of the figure dry. Okay, so this is dry. It's, at this point and now I'm gonna lay in the color in my background so um, here you have a choice you can switch up your color tone so if I wanted to put uh, if I notice I here I've got a whole bunch of greens and I wanted to use a complement I could use like reds and pinks and whatnot in the background and because this is dry I know it's not gonna mix so that you can do that, but you still do want to keep with the same kind of color range, the same kind of analogous color choices on your palette as before. Um, so um, I'm actually going to keep with my same color range because I like the look of having the same, the whole painting having a little bit of unity in it in its color choice. But I'm going to change the value of my color. So the all that means is I'm going to use a whole b bunch of white, a lot more white, and a little bit more blue than I did in the background to differentiate so it doesn't all just look the same as uh, the, the painting, the figure itself. So I'm going to grab white, and I'm going to put a little bit of blue onto the palette knife too, and 
I'm going to lay it in. Now on the back side, it doesn't matter if I'm overlapping on top of the painting. And I'm also paying attention to making sure that my paint goes right to the edge. So that's why I've got a protecting sheet um, underneath because I wanna paint right over the edge and not have to worry about it. So I'm still taking the similar colors. Notice I'm still using the same green as before, still using the same blue, the same yellow, but I'm using a lot more white and I'm going to go a little bit more heavy on the blue than I did in the figure itself because I wanna have a little bit of a difference and I'm using the scraping technique again to get kind of a cool marble effect. Still remembering that the first colors that I lay down are the ones I'm going to see on the back side of this Durlar. So I don't, I'm not really worried about laying really, really thick paint because I know it's not going to be seen. But I am keeping the values light. I'm going to add a whole bunch of more white on the on the back side. It doesn't matter if I overlap on the back. It's going to look messy here on the back. When I flip it over, because you've done an overlap, it looks really, really great. Okay, so um, same color range, same techniques, lighter values, or you can go way darker. Uh, you just want to have a difference in value. That's the lightness or darkness to, to your main subject. And there you go. Then you have your, your beautiful technique on the back. Give it a try.